opening up parts of the Harbour Foreshore that people from Sydney have never been able to access. In particular, we're opening up area around the White Bay Power Station, which has been closed since the early 1980s. So we want people to come down today, have a look, get up close, touch it, feel it, see it, really understand the area. And then we're wanting to work closely with the community to look at the future of this place. I cycle past here, I drive past here, often look in and I think what a wonderful place this is for Sydney to do something with. It's an incredible space. This would make a sensational kind of art zone of some sort. I've got fond memories of this power station smoke issuing from the top of the chimneys. It was very dear to my heart because it meant we were going on an outing for the day. And when it closed, I felt quite... Um, well, I felt that something was missing, but I, I still would like to see it transported into the 21st century in some yeah, meaningful yeah. way. Now we're moving into a clean energy future. There needs to be a site where people can actually have a look at energy, how it's produced. So the whole thing works not only just as a renewable energy and a low energy emitter, but a, a format that actually shows people how we can live a lifestyle that is in a much lower carbon producing environment. There's a lovely huge flat area between White Bay and Glebe Island that would be perfect for playing fields. Our, our council area has the least playing fields in, in the, the state and we really need more so, so we're really looking towards getting something like that. Well it's interesting the number of people who are amazed at the sheer amount of land that is presently blocked off to the public, access to the waterfront that's blocked off to the public. I think there's a great excitement about what could happen here. It would be lovely to have it as an active area again, as it was. And if that's going to be people and population and kids and parks and playing fields and libraries and art, it would be brilliant to have that because it would bring life back. But it's got to be more than just the developer dollar. We'd certainly like to see uh, a lot of architecture preserved. That, that lovely old bridge over there, that's something that, uh, you know, my son's children should be able to enjoy it. And our kids are primary school age now, but heading into the next 10 years, we're going to be looking for better higher education facilities and good, good public transport. The idea of some public access, maybe a ferry stop, would be nice. The fish markets, I think, is probably something that could be improved considerably. Oh, I'd like a new venue for music and events probably around here, that'd be pretty good. Great to have some cafes, restaurants all around the bay with, with the aspects of the water and, and the bridge, but also just to have homes and, and living spaces, park spaces. You know, it's lovely to get the, to get the sense of the, the bay opening out. That's what I think is really nice. We're all sort of looking outwards and seeing the possibilities of it. So yes, it's been a lovely day. This is part of exposing to Sydney side is just what the potential is here um, and then we will fold that into uh, a summit which will be held in May called the Sydney Cider Summit which will be all about exposing the possibilities to Sydney Ciders and it's a completely free and open two days so we've opened up that and we'll open up people's imaginations as a result of that. <laughs>